there's so many things that I wanted to talk to you about today and they've just been adding up. And skip. We're halfway through November and all of a sudden I wake up and there's just, it's not, it's sleet, it's winter. How come? Why winter? Why now? Winter is when the earth is the furthest from the sun. If you're in the southern hemisphere, yes. But those two things aren't correlated, so I don't know why you're bringing it up. Oh. No. Actually, the earth is closest to the sun in the winter for the northern hemisphere. Canada, US, Europe, Russia, Asia. Oh, it's all winter when we're closest to the sun. Again, yes. If you're in the northern hemisphere, yes. But these two things aren't connected to each other. They don't correlate. You're doing the same thing that Gypsy Girl did, where you have found this inconsistency in how our language describes the world, and you are giving it far too much meaning. Because we would usually expect that if we are closer to a hot thing, we would be hotter. But the opposite is true in this case. And while this doesn't make sense on sort of the micro level, the the everyday level, it makes sense on the on the macro level, on the on the big scale. But you want to give it far more meaning than this little language quirk actually has. Because the Earth is tilted on its axis. And so even though the distance, <gasps> my light. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna deal with your stupid humor. The distance between the tilt of the planet, um, 23.4 degrees, even though the tilt is, the difference in the tilt between the Northern hemisphere, which is tilted closer to the sun, and the southern hemisphere, which is tilted away from the sun, even though the difference of the tilt is really small and actually smaller than the distance between the sun and the earth in summer and the sun and the earth in winter. So the, this less of a difference, but still, it's still winter when the earth is closer to the sun but we're tilted away from it even though the tilt makes us less far away from the sun than we are in the summer you don't say it's almost as if the distance between earth and the sun doesn't really affect our seasons Hmm, I wonder who says that. So what you are doing here, Orphan Red, is you are very slimily putting together a straw man. A straw man of what you think scientists say, in order so that you can beat up on it and therefore prove that the Earth is flat. Nobody says that the distance between the sun and the Earth is what causes seasons. That can't be right. So what they tell us is makes it all clear. When the sun is striking the earth directly, then this, the light goes straight through the atmosphere and onto us, and then it's summer and it's hot. So you do understand that it's the tilt that matters and not the distance. So maybe you should talk about that picture that you're showing there that explains how the tilt matters. But when the light has to go through the angle through the atmosphere then it's old not hot say what now old not hot it's old not hot old not hot well then and it's really cold and snowing hey i'm pretty sure that picture you have there explains why because the light has to travel through an extra little bit of atmosphere. God damn it. 
talk about the picture that you are showing on your fucking screen. The one right next to your face. Because that picture explains to you how seasons work. Even though the heat has come from so, so far and it hits our atmosphere, just a little bit of extra feet by the tilting... Maybe it's a, maybe it's not a couple extra feet. Maybe it's a couple of kilometers, even though that's just itty bitty compared to how far the light supposedly traveled to get to the Earth. It's still just this sucks up all the heat, and then none of the sun's heat hits us at all. It has nothing to do with the distance, as we have talked about earlier, as you talked about earlier. It has to do with how much light is hitting a certain area. And in the picture that you are showing, it shows you how at higher latitudes, the light is spread out over a larger area, and how closer to the equator, it is not as spread out, it is more concentrated, therefore more intense, therefore hotter. You are infuriating because I can tell that you know what the scientific reasoning is behind seasons. And yet here you are pretending to be an idiot about it in order so that you can make a straw man about it so that you can beat it up and look like you're smart. No, that's not why. And then some people said, hello, scientists. That doesn't make a lot of sense because even in the summer, when the sun is setting and it's near the horizon, it has to go through all that extra atmosphere. But it's not winter every sunset in the summer. So that doesn't make much sense. That doesn't make much sense? No shit. It's almost as if it's a really idiotic idea that some bimbo on the internet came up with. Nobody says that. I want you, Orphan Red, to go find me a fucking scientific article that explains season in which somebody says that the distance that the light has to travel is what causes seasons. You're not going to find one because nobody says it. The only one who says it is you. And you say it because you are a slimy fuck who wants to create a straw man of the scientific community. So then the scientists made it all clear again because then they told us, well, no, silly, because in the summer, the, the atmosphere in the oceans that store up all the heat from the light of the sun, just all the accumulation of the heat just just accumulates. And then it's all hot in the day, even though we're so much further away from the sun than we are in the winter. Stop talking about things that you clearly have no idea about. You are clearly ignorant of how weather systems work. You are clearly ignorant of how climate works. Except for at night, sometimes it can still be cold. Sometimes you have a hot day, 20 degrees Celsius in the spring, and then at night it just goes down to minus two. And then the next day it's plus 12 and this, so the heat that is collected in the oceans and in the atmosphere only works during the day. And then at night, it doesn't work the same way. So you can still have very cold nights, very hot days at some points of the year, even though the reason that summer is hot is because the atmosphere and oceans keep it hot because they accumulate the heat, they store it, and then they release it. They don't release it at night. It's almost as if weather is this hugely complicated system that has many parts in it that involve both the way that the sun strikes the earth, what kind of winds are coming by, the counts of clouds, the kind of area that you live in. It's almost as if 
it's very complex. Now, you are either too stupid to understand the complexity of weather, or you are pretending to be an idiot in order to create a straw man of something that nobody says so that you can look smart. Now, considering what your channel is, Orphan Red, I'm gonna go for the former. And I find it incredible that in the age of the internet, it never occurred to you to Google the sentence, why do we have seasons? Because if you would have done that, you would have bumped into a slew of articles and videos all explaining very clearly how seasons work. And more importantly, most of them tell you that seasons have nothing to do with the distance to the sun. But here's the thing, lots of people think that the hemisphere that's tilted toward the sun experiences summer because it's closer and therefore hotter, which is just false. In fact, those of you in the northern hemisphere might be surprised to know that the Earth is actually 5 million kilometers closer to the sun in January than it is in July. So the difference doesn't have to do with your hemisphere's proximity to the sun, it has to do with the angle of the sun's rays that it receives. With all of this combined, I start to get the feeling that you just act stupid. That you just act stupid to create a straw man, which I just find pathetic. It is extremely sad that the only way that you feel that you can get attention is to act stupid. See what I mean?